Imagine sitting and watching a video or listening to a podcast and having a wearable take your brain data and start typing out the text of what you are listening to. And then imagine being able to sit with that same wearable and create text from imagining what you wanna say and have it appear almost instantly on the screen. A groundbreaking study from the University of Austin has just revealed how we can use wearable brain computer interface technologies to create thought to text capabilities in the next five years from non-invasive language decoders. Researchers were able to use an artificial neural net, much like ChatGPT, to generate a script of what research subjects were watching or listening to simply from their brain scans alone. Within the study findings is a paradigm shift in where these signals were found in the brain that will influence how we're able to design wearable brain computer interface technologies to generate thought to text and other related language capabilities. Hello again, and welcome to Tech for Psych, where we expand minds through neurotechnology. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. We're really stepping into the realm of science fiction here. And when I saw this study, it completely blew my mind and was a big paradigm shift in my thinking of what we're capable of doing with these wearable brain computer interface technologies in the near future. The thing that should blow your mind is that these researchers were able to use non-invasive brain scans to generate text from perceived speech, imagined speech, and even silent videos, much like ChatGPT does for queried responses. There are a few cases of BCIs being implanted into the motor cortex of people with disabilities through neurosurgery to create thought-to-speech capabilities, but the introduction of non-invasive language decoders could be much more widely adopted and help all people interact with technological devices through thought by analysis of bias signals in the language centers of the brain. In order to get these experimental results, research Researchers were using a functional MRI machine that costs around $3 million and takes up half a room. But I've demonstrated quite a few times on this channel that there are technologies coming within the next couple of years that take those capabilities of an fMRI and put it in the form of a wearable. Kernel in particular has developed time domain functional near infrared spectroscopy that measures blood flows several times per second throughout the whole brain. In contrast to an MRI machine that costs several million dollars and takes up a whole room, the wearable kernel headset costs around $100,000 right now with plans to reduce the price significantly over the coming years. Combine University of Austin speech generation AI with kernel's headgear and I think that there's the potential for a demonstration of these language generating capabilities within the next year. In contrast, Mendy's continuous wave FNIRS is good enough for neurofeedback technology, but not precise enough for language generation. Regardless, Mendy shows that FNIRS can be fitted into a wearable for a couple hundred dollars, and I would expect the sensors that do have better signal to noise ratio to become much cheaper over time. Also, remember that kernel sensors are already modular, so kernel themselves could come out with a smaller, cheaper wearable at any time. It is my belief that kernel could actually reproduce these results within a year or two. In fact, two years ago, Kernel was able to demonstrate similar capabilities with their OpMeg in which they were able to determine what song people were listening to out of a set of 10. It seems that the OpMeg was too cumbersome to fit into a wearable form, so they're focused on kernel flow now, but it's my hope that these artificial intelligence capabilities will allow the kernel flow to produce similar results that the MRI machines are able to. We speak words in English at about two words per second, but the blood flow rises and falls around 10 seconds, meaning that each MRI image may represent 20 different words. That's why we need the artificial intelligence to tease out word sequences and produce the best candidate word sequences that it thinks that the person was listening or watching. As you can imagine, there's a lot of data complexity here, and there's no way that we could do this without use of artificial intelligence, much like the type that's being used in ChatGPT3 from OpenAI. So diving further into this paper, we see that the text generation capabilities of this AI is just mind-blowing. The subjects listen to 16 hours of narrative stories to train an encoding model before doing the experiments. Then subjects listen to an entirely new story. The researchers found that the decoder exactly reproduced some words and phrases and captures the gist of many more with 72 to 82 percent accuracy throughout the stories. For example, in a narrative story that a test subject was listening to, the following passage occurred. I didn't know whether to scream, cry, or run away, but instead said, leave me alone. I don't need your help. Adam disappeared, and I cleaned up alone, crying. 
From the brain scan, the AI generated text that stated, started to scream and cry. Then she just said, I told you to leave me alone. You can't hurt me. I'm sorry. Then he stormed off. I thought it had left. I started to cry. What's fascinating is that they were able to generate these results from several different areas of the brain, including the frontal lobe, which is a lot more accessible in terms of wearables. The researchers successfully decoded information from the classical language network, the parietal temporal occipital association network, and the prefrontal network. The association network had 77 to 83% accuracy, whereas the prefrontal network had 54 to 82% accuracy. These findings demonstrated that within each area of the brain, there's a substantial amount of repeated information, meaning that we could get good thought to speech performance even from analyzing the frontal lobe alone. This affects the design of BCI wearables because it could mean that we don't always need full head coverage for some of these capabilities, meaning that they could be smaller, less cumbersome, and less expensive, like the Medi forehead sensor as opposed to the current kernel flow full head coverage. It also would limit complications that often come from trying to make measurements of the brain through scalp areas covered in hair. Previous studies have shown that when we imagine speech or images, it actually creates similar brain patterns to when we hear or see things. During one experiment, they had subjects imagine telling five different one minute stories while being recorded with the fMRI. The AI was then able to identify which story they were silently telling from the brain scan alone with 100% accuracy out of the one in five chance. In another experiment, they had subjects watch four different films without sound and generated the following audio descriptions. Just look at the text generated from a brain scan of this movie. The subject was watching this clip where a girl gets knocked off a dragon and it says, I see a girl that looks just like me get hit on her back and then she is knocked off. And this one where she's holding the dragon, it says, she was very weak. I held her neck to get her breathing under control. The researchers also had test subjects listen to to two different presenters at the same time, but only pay attention to one of the presenters. The presenter's story that they were listening to generated the best text, meaning that from brain scans alone, you could tell which person they were actually listening to. This fact alone has far reaching implications in understanding what people are actually listening to, helping them pay attention to lectures and any other activities where focus is important. In a final test for privacy concerns, researchers showed that you have to have your own data set for the computer to be able to to determine what you were listening to. Taking a 16 hour training set from one subject did not allow the computer to read another subject's perceived speech. Also, even for the people that had done the 16 hour training set, if the computer tried to determine what they were listening to with that training data set, but the person was either counting by sevens or imagining an animal or thinking of a different story while they were listening to a story, the computer could not determine what they were actually listening to. That means that you can actually block the mind reading effects of the computer if you choose to do so. So at this point, it looks like you can't just throw a headset on a random person and read their thoughts if you're interrogating them or other apocalyptic predictions that the brain computer interface technologies might be able to do. And even if someone had your private data training set, you could actually block the effects of mind reading capabilities from brain computer interface technologies by doing things like imagining something else. These thought to text capabilities from brain computer interface wearables are really the convergence of two different technologies. There's the brain scan technology that's getting better and better signal to noise ratio and more precise in tracking things like the electrical dissipation of neurons, as well as the blood flow associated with them, as well as the big data analytic tools like OpenAI has developed to analyze the data from the brain scans. And seeing how fast the artificial intelligence capabilities have developed in the last five years makes me really optimistic that we're going to be able to have brain computer interface technologies sooner than a lot of people think. We're still looking for that watershed moment and Kernel is working diligently on their Kernel flow and we're still waiting to see what Open Water does with their ultrasound FNIRS combination, which could also take things to the next level. For now, I'll be using these technologies for diagnostics of brain health and neurofeedback training, but there is a lot more on the way soon. If you wanna see my visit to Kernel headquarters, check out this video here and I'll see you on the other side.